The Starship, the biggest and perhaps most important rocket in development at SpaceX, has just received a design update in its newest prototype. Tasked with making humans a multi-planetary species, the deep space transport will first have to go through several prototype phases before it is ready for launch. Let's take a closer look at the newest Starship prototype. Starship and Super Heavy are the biggest, most important pieces of Elon Musk's grand plan for SpaceX. When Musk revealed his idea to the world, he laid out a basic plan. A large spacecraft and a huge rocket, both of which will be completely and rapidly reusable. The rocket will launch the spacecraft into Earth's orbit, then come back down to Earth for a vertical, propulsive landing. The spaceship, meanwhile, will make its way from Earth's orbit to Mars. The craft will touch down on such alien worlds and take off from them as well, without the need for any additional landing craft or ascent vehicles. Off-Earth refueling of the ship is therefore key to Musk's vision. For example, spacecraft coming home from Mars or the Moon will need to be topped up on those worlds, using locally produced propellant. In 2016, Musk called this architecture the Interplanetary Transport System. The name was new, as the billionaire had previously referred to his envisioned concept as the Mars Colonial Transporter. Back then, Musk stated that the ITS will stand 400 feet tall when stacked. Both vehicles will be powered by SpaceX's next-generation Raptor engine, which is more powerful than the Merlin that propels the company's Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets. The ITS ship will sport nine Raptors, and the 40-foot-wide booster will boast a whopping 42, allowing the rocket to produce 13,033 tons of thrust at liftoff. 3.6 times more than NASA's Saturn V moon rocket was able to generate. And there won't just be one ITS ship and booster. The ultimate plan involves sending 1,000 or more people packed spaceships to Mars every 26 months, helping to establish a million-person city on the Red Planet within 50 to 100 years. Musk did not lay out plans for building this city. The ITS's reusability could eventually bring the price of a Mars trip down enough to make it affordable for large numbers of people. This overall vision has held firm over the past three years, but Musk has repeatedly tweaked the design and the system's name. In 2017, for example, he announced that ITS was now the BFR, which stood for Big Falcon Rocket. The BFR was shorter, slimmer, and less powerful than its design predecessor, measuring 348 feet tall by 30 feet wide when stacked and featuring only 31 Raptor engines on the booster and six on the spaceship. But the biggest change concerned the use of the spaceship rocket duo. Musk announced that SpaceX eventually planned to employ the BFR for all of its spaceflight needs, from launching satellites to ferrying people to and from Mars to cleaning up space junk in Earth orbit. The Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy therefore will be phased out over the long haul, as will both the crew and cargo variants of SpaceX's Dragon capsule. Musk stated that expanding the BFR's role in this manner will make the system much more affordable for SpaceX to develop and manufacture. In September 2018, Musk told us that the rocket spaceship duo will now stand 387 feet tall when stacked. The BFR ship will also sport seven Raptors instead of six, and the vehicle will now sport four movable fins, two near its nose and two bigger ones near the tail. These fins will help the ship maneuver its way to safe landings on worlds with significant atmospheres, such as Mars and Earth. The two rear fins will also serve as landing pads, as will a leg that's stylized to look like a fin. Two months later, the BFR was no more. Musk told us that the system will now be called Starship. That will also be the spaceship's name, whereas the huge rocket will be called Super Heavy. Musk plans to build a full-size city on the surface of Mars. This would be a city open to regular people, not just scientists and researchers. People interested in moving to Mars could pay for their flight with a loan. Once there, people would be able to pay off the loan by working in anything from iron foundries to pizzerias. Musk declared at a 2016 conference that there would be labor shortages for a long time. It's an idea that arguably bears resemblance to 19th century American company towns, where employees lived in a city owned by their employer. Especially in the early days, Mars may not have many choices for local employment, and you'll need to pay off that loan for your flight. This city would be free to govern itself on its own terms, as indicated by the Starlink Internet Service Terms and Conditions released in October 2020. 
This appears to stand in contradiction to the 1967 Outer Space Treaty, which states that the launch origin country is responsible for subsequent space activities. David Anderman, who served as SpaceX's general counsel when the terms were released, suggests that the two documents may be set on a collision course. Musk estimated in 2019 that it would take around 1 million tons of cargo to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. Assuming it cost $100,000 per ton to send cargo to Mars with the upcoming Starship, that would put a Mars city's price at around $100 billion. At the high end, Musk estimates it could cost around $10 trillion. SpaceX may not stop with just one city, however. Paul Wooster, the principal Mars development engineer for SpaceX, said at the 21st annual International Mars Society Convention in August 2022 that SpaceX could build multiple cities. The idea would be to expand out and start not just with an outpost, but grow into a larger base, not just like there are in Antarctica, but a village then a town, which grows into a city, and then multiple cities on Mars. Musk claimed in 2019 that a return ticket could cost around $500,000 initially, dropping to $100,000 over time. Musk's goal in 2016 was to reach a ticket price of around the median price of a house in the United States. That would suggest people could sell their houses to move to Mars. In 2017, Musk outlined an aspirational plan to send two cargo ships to Mars as early as 2022. It would then send four ships at the next closest approach, two crewed ships and two cargo ships in 2024. However, in March 2022, Musk suggested that a more likely date for humanity to witness the first humans on Mars would perhaps be 2029. It's also possible, however, that Musk was referencing the moon landing that took place in 1969, making it around 60 years between the two feats. Mars and Earth are at their closest around once every 26 months. The distance between the two at this time reduces to around 33.9 million miles. As SpaceX has yet to even host its first orbital flight with the Starship, it seems unlikely that it will send the first cargo ships this year. If SpaceX adjusts its plans to a more realistic late 2020s deadline, it's perhaps more possible that Musk could indeed meet his goal. With such lofty plans for the future, a lot depends on the performance of the Raptor engines, which are at the core of every new rocket used by SpaceX. The company makes regular upgrades to the engine to improve its efficiency and reusability. In recent months, SpaceX has used two variants of the engine, with the newer one dubbed Raptor 2. The company states Raptor 2 includes a large number of performance and reliability improvements over the previous iteration. The Raptor engine is a full-flow, staged combustion cycle that runs on super-chilled liquid oxygen and super-chilled liquid methane, both of which will power SpaceX's next-generation vehicle, Starship. The Raptor engine benefits from the highly advantageous FFSCC cycle, maximizing the impulse generated by a given amount of propellant. It is the third FFSCC engine to ever be developed and the first to leave the test stand. The first stage of Starship, called Super Heavy, will be jam-packed with 33 Raptor engines, 20 non-gimbling Raptor engines in the outermost ring, 10 gimbling engines in the middle ring, and 3 gimbling central engines in the innermost ring. This number is expected to decrease in the future as SpaceX further upgrades Raptor. The second stage, Starship, currently hosts 6 total engines, 3 vacuum-optimized non-gimbling engines, and 3 sea-level gimbling engines. Elon Musk has noted that in the future, the ship is likely to gain three more vacuum-optimized engines once they increase the length of the ship. Raptor is constructed from SpaceX's proprietary SX500 alloy, copper, aluminum, and steel alloys. There is no information to suggest that these have significantly changed between Raptor 1 and Raptor 2. The engine relies on a small amount of 3D printing. However, SpaceX is trying to remove as much 3D printing as possible due to the inability to scale, high cost, and low manufacturing rate. One of Raptor's most impressive specs is its gimbling range. The engine can gimbal 15 degrees on the Y and Z axes, which is needed for the flip and burn landing that Starship makes. A gimbal range of 15 degrees is a lot. For comparison, the RS-25 gimbals to 12.5 degrees and the SpaceX Merlin engine gimbals to 5 degrees on the first stage. At the beginning of 2022, the first Raptor 2 was spotted, marking the end of Raptor 1. After Raptor 2 production began, SpaceX stopped producing all Raptor 1.5 engines. Compared to the original Raptor, Raptor 2 looks borderline incomplete. 
A large amount of plumbing and sensors have been removed, transitioning the engine from a Christmas tree look to a significantly cleaner look. On the original version of Raptor, while SpaceX was learning how to control the engine, a very large amount of development sensors were needed, allowing them to track pressure and temperature throughout Raptor's plumbing. Additionally, many valves were combined into valve plates, helping further simplify plumbing. By removing a large amount of these components, SpaceX has made the engine more flame and heat-proof, a clear step towards SpaceX's goal of removing all engine shrouding from the booster, which would decrease the booster's mass by six tons. This is a clear example of Musk's the best part is no part mantra. As research and development continue on the Starship, the latest news from SpaceX is that a new prototype for the vehicle has successfully undergone a static fire test of its engines ahead of its first planned orbital test flight. SpaceX fired seven engines on its Starship Super Heavy prototype Booster 7 on September 19th, marking the highest number of the company's new Raptor engines ever tested at the same time. To prepare for Starship's maiden orbital flight, SpaceX has been conducting static fire tests with increasing intensity in which one or more engines are ignited while the vehicle remains stationary on the ground. A static fire test is a rough equivalent of revving a car engine in neutral, with this particular one lasting around 10 seconds. SpaceX is still awaiting a launch license from the FAA for the first orbital test flight of Starship. The company cleared a major hurdle in June with the completion of an environmental review that allows the launch to go forward but requires dozens of modifications to the mission plan. Once SpaceX has the green light from regulators, Starship will be able to launch from Starbase and take a brief trip to orbit before performing a splashdown landing in the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Hawaii. Super Heavy will separate from Starship shortly after launch and attempt to land on a modified drilling rig in the Gulf of Mexico. In addition to its inevitable role in getting humans to Mars, all of this is leading up to Starship's eventual participation in NASA's Artemis program to return astronauts to the surface of the moon as soon as 2025. If you like this video, you may also like this one, which talks about NASA's new helical engine that breaks the laws of physics. Do you think the Starship will be ready in time for the Artemis mission? Please share your thoughts in the comments section below.